Welcome back, you're watching Morning Live. Uh, we're going to turn our attention on to cricket because, of course, there is that ongoing first test between the Proteas and Bangladesh. At lunch, currently, the score is at 252 for five in favour of Bangladesh. So the hosts uh, lead South Africa's first innings a total of 248 by four runs as they enjoy lunch and the South Africans have a lot to think about. So that's going to be our focus. We're focusing in on a cricket for this next interview. Bangladesh confirmed their rise as a major force in 50 over cricket when they thrashed the Proteas by nine wickets in the third one day international. Uh, they won the series 2-1 uh, and they're currently giving South Africa a good run for their money in the uh, test series as we opened up this interview with. To chat a little bit more about cricket we have uh, cricket analyst Peter Kirsten in studio. Good morning and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning Violent. thank you very much. Lovely to be here. And good to chat to you again. Okay so let's start with the test because I mean that's ongoing. The Proteas are sitting scratching their heads thinking how do we get these next five Bangladeshi wickets? Yeah certainly are scratching their heads so they're going to have to do something pretty quickly and uh, of course Dale Stein's striking this morning. He's only three short of 400 uh, test wickets. That's incredible but he hasn't been at his best. I don't think the South African team have been at their best. Certainly the last two ODR, ODRs are now this test match. Who would have thought Bangladesh Tigers would take a lead with still five wickets standing. So the new ball is already like 12 overs old. That's quite sort of worrying. And uh, you'd rely on your spinners on this type of a pitch, like the Bangladesh four spinners they've got. So if they get a lead of like 100, South Africa in big trouble, even a 70-run lead. So on this particular pitch, they'll get that spin, the turn like they did in the first innings. So, uh, you know, Ashley Mamla has got a lot of, lot of work to do, plus he's bowler Simon Harmer, the off-spinner. But the Tigers got a lot of fight. They're a vastly different side to what they have been in the last decade. OK, I'm looking at these ICC test rankings. Yeah. It, it almost hurts as much as the cricket that's going on at the moment. South Africa are a top-ranked team. Bangladesh down at number nine in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah, what do we read into this that... that Test rankings mean nothing? Well, no, they mean a lot. I think uh, since the World Cup in March, a lot of uh, South African players have not played a lot. Dale Stain is rusty and uh, he needs to, do, to, to get back to his best. More and more the same, although they played RPL. But I think, you know, the younger test playing nations don't like to be beaten uh, consistently and I think their management is very good. There's a lot of young energy they got to the, court, to the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Shandika Hatturisinga is a Sri Lankan. He's now the head coach. And, of course, African influence in Heath Streak. He's there on the bowling side. Okay. So they've got a, a new young uh, convener of selectors plus a new president in terms of the cricket. So I think there's a lot of good young energy. This young, uh, this young uh, Raman, the left arm, is, is a beautiful little bowler. And of course, yeah. uh, the young captain in Rahim. So there's, they, 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 they're relying and investing in this young energy. And I think they're catching, well, they've just caught India and Pakistan in yeah. June and, and, and one ODR series there. So they're a vastly different cricketing side. So uh, beware every test-playing nation as South Africa are finding out. And, and also, it's not going to stop anytime soon. You know that uh, the under-19 Bangladesh yes. team were recently yes. in South Africa for a youth series against our world yes. champion under-19 team. They're, of course, <laughs> preparing for the, to, to defend that title in six months. Some of them got beaten here yeah. at home, 5-2 in a series. Yeah. So it seems as if what Bangladesh certainly are doing, they're doing right. Let's turn our attention to the ODI series. Because that also came as a shock, not because South Africa just lost it, but also the manner in which they lost it. Yeah, I think South Africa sort of underestimated this new uh, Bangladesh wave of energy and motivation with uh, Shandika Hatra Singer and Heath Streak. But I think that uh, they experimented with a lot of new players. Of course, they didn't have Dale Stein, Vernon Philander, Mornay Morkel only played in one. And of course, uh, A.B. de Villiers is the big loss, uh, certainly for South Africa in, these, in this test match and the one to follow. So uh, I think we're now realising the value that A.B. de Villiers brings to any South African team in any format. We would also like to see Hashim Amla get back to his best. He's uh, not been at his best so far. You would expect him to come right in the second innings. So, uh, and of course, new guys coming in, Stian Fonsale, etc., etc. But the ODIs, I think South Africa, they won the first two T20s nicely, and then the first ODI, and then I think they went off the boil. And we saw the real Bangladesh side come to the party. So, a lot of experimentation in the South African ODI sort of format, and also in the Test cricket. If you look at Stian Fonsale now opening the batting. So, yeah. you would expect this after the loss of a number of good players. <laughs> 
what is it, I mean, because as much as we know that Bangladesh have been doing a lot right, what does it actually mean for, for South Africa? Um, because as much as we can be surprised and, and, and laud Bangladesh for what they have been able to do, what does it mean for South Africa and the Proteas? I think uh, let's, not, let's, let's not be prophets of doom. There's still a lot of good depth in South African cricket. We have a very strong domestic competition. And we have our schoolboy cricket is brilliant. Yes, the worrying side would be the under-19s losing badly to Bangladesh. Of course, don't forget they lost 6-1 to Bangladesh in Bangladesh. So we need to look at that area. But uh, I'm not too concerned because of our domestic competition. There is a lot of depth there. But, but we, we need, to, we need to, to be able to replace the AB de Villiers, the Hashim Amras in time to come. And that's going to be very, very tough. Dale Stein as well. Yeah. I just want to mention congratulations to A.B. de Villiers and his wife. I think yes. it was yesterday that they had a little baby boy, which is, which is fabulous. Uh, Peter, I, I've got to wrap it up, but I just want to get one comment from you, and that is about the impact that the controversy following the World Cup, what impact do you think that may have had on the team? Because it really left a very bad taste in so many people's mouths. Yeah, well, I think we have a history in World Cups of doing something daft. That's a word that comes to mind, daft. Let's not be daft. Let's concentrate on cricket playing matters and not too much interference from outside of the current management at that particular series. So it does upset uh, the leading players and just little things like that. And you can just lose your focus. And you saw that happening in that uh, mm. semi-final against New Zealand. So let's stick to cricket and leave other issues outside of it. All right, lovely stuff, Peter Kirsten. Thank you very much. Let's hope that it changes after the lunch break on day three of the first test between South Africa and Bangladesh. Uh, it's uh, time for us to take a quick break here on Morning Live. Stay with the show.